on the assembly in front just to let the passerby actually get past, but hopefully stop as well. Anybody going past now? This is Cardiff Trades Council's uh, May Day rally. Uh, obviously, we're we're looking at uh, what we can do in terms of uh, fighting back against the Tories, against the employers in a cost of living crisis. And I think, to be honest, it's very clear, and I think we've seen with the Unite research, but also in our own experience, that uh, whilst we're struggling to make ends meet, it's not true for everybody, quite frankly. And, uh, you know, <laughs> the corporate greed that is causing inflation, the absolutely benan absolute bonanza of profits that has been uh, ongoing since the end of the pandemic and also during the pandemic, these bosses have no shame. They are actually wanting to make absolutely billions out of us. And all the essentials that we need to buy, all the essentials that, you know, make, uh, uh, the, that everybody needs to get in terms of fuel, in terms of food, in terms of everything that we need. Those companies that actually provide those goods are absolutely making billions and billions of pounds worth of profits whilst we're paying for it. And they want to make us pay uh, for this crisis. The Tories want to blame our wage increases uh, for the, the, the inflation. Quite frankly, what pay increases? Uh, it's not definitely not our pay increases that's causing inflation. Civil servants only had 2% uh, last year. Definitely not our wages causing inflation. And it is really important, and this is... You know, at the end of a year of a massive uh, uh, industrial action across our movement, we've seen wave upon wave of strikes happening, and actually our movement is on the rise uh, across England, Wales, Scotland, and Northern Ireland as well. So across the whole of the UK, but across the world, workers are not taking it. So we've got a good lineup of speakers representing the movement. Uh, who have actually been taking action, leading struggles, demanding a decent uh, wage increase. We've got some uh, reps who are going to report on the victories, but also some of those uh, struggles are ongoing. And you can see the impact of the anti-union laws already in terms of most of the disputes we've had to reballot uh, because six months isn't long enough uh, to sort out the disputes that we have. Uh, and actually the Tories want to introduce more. So I, it's, it's welcome that uh, the Senate has debated the minimum services bill, uh, but also the House of Lords has re uh, rejected the fact that it should apply in Wales. But we want more than that. We want a commitment from all the employers in Wales, all the public sector employers in Wales, that they will not apply uh, at any minimum services level uh, Tory anti-union legislation. So there's a fight on our hands and I think we'll have reports of what's going on in terms of the union movement demanding that. So we've got a good line of speakers. Our first speaker, very pleased. Uh, originally I think uh, uh, Sarah did want to come to, to Cardiff, got uh, somebody else picked us at the post last year in terms of booking her, but very pleased to welcome Sarah Woolley, the General Secretary of the Bakers Union, who's been leading the fight in terms of demanding uh, that the trade union movement demands a decent living wage, a living wage that we can live on, £15 an hour, which uh, you know is, is the bare minimum that we should expect, and we need much more than that. <coughs> <laughs> this is why they don't let me out of England very often. I break things when I come across the border. Um, thank you for the invitation to speak today. It's brilliant to be here, letting the world know that trade unions are here, we're loud, we're proud, and we will continue to be the voice of working people and fight for our members, regardless of what the Tories are trying to do to us over the border. Solidarity to each and every one of you that are in dispute at the minute. To those that thought it was over, dig deep. We are absolutely behind you and stand shoulder to shoulder with you. You are inspiring millions of other working people to demand better in their workplaces and fighting not only for your rights, your terms and your conditions to protect but to protect them for future generations and for people, you know, service users of rail and etc etc, making it safer for them. The rising cost of living is killing people. We know that our members who work in the food industry were struggling to put food on the table and survive back in 2021 when we ran our right to food survey back then. With the increase to energy and national insurance contributions, the rising cost of food as well as everything else, people are barely scraping by. 
It's absolutely disgusting that in the UK, the fifth richest world, country in the world, there are more food banks than there are McDonald's stores. We've just rerun our survey asking BFAW members about their experience of accessing food during the cost of living crisis. And whilst we haven't published the results yet, they'll be out in a couple of weeks. We've had some members that have told us that their houses feel like a prison. They stay at work longer so they don't have to put the heating on at home because they can't afford to. And it's just horrid going back home to the cold. They don't invite people over because they're ashamed. There's no food in the fridge. There's no heating on. And the houses are full of blankets because they move from one room to another, keeping themselves warm by wrapping themselves up in extra layers. This is disgraceful. Mm -hmm. In 2020, 20, 2023, working people, hard working people that are feeding our nation don't earn enough to survive. They're literally freezing and going hungry. And what are the Tories doing about this? Instead of working with devolved nations and looking at how we get a right to decent, nutritious, affordable food for everyone, and I must stress because I know there's um, pilots for free school meals in Wales that we need more than free school meals because whilst they're great we've got members that are making sure their din kids have dinner at tea time and then going and doing a 12 hour shift with no food in their bellies mm. it's not good enough but no instead of doing that they're looking at ways which they can attempt to break unions because everything they've tried so far hasn't worked but you know what Whatever the try is not going to work. It's going to continue to fail because trade unions aren't third party organisations. They are our members who come together and are powerful when they act collectively. Our members are the general public that they are trying to so hard to get on side. But we can't rest on our laurels. We've got a lot of work to do, friends. We need to be talking to working people about trade unions. Removing the myths and the lives peddled by the right wing media that we're just greedy lefty weirdos and proving that workers coming together, standing shoulder to shoulder, are strong, they are powerful and enact change because this is vital to regrowing our movement. We have to take over those spaces that the right wing fascists are trying to encroach. Initiatives like Organise Now are helping with this and if you're wondering what that is, have a look at the website sign up to be a volunteer and join the other 180 people that have so far in six months supported 100 workers begin organising their workplace. 100 workers that didn't know what a trade union was before those conversations. But we can't stop there. Everyone here today needs to go away, talk to your friends, your neighbours, your colleagues, your kids, your grandchildren about trade unions. Tell them that we're not a third party insurance company that swoops in to support them when they're in trouble. That it's not general secretaries like me that are trade unions. That it's them, their mates, their work colleagues and their neighbours that make up the trade union movement. And that change happens when we are organised and stand collectively, workplace by workplace, community by community. It's great to be here with you today, solidarity with all of you. And if there's anything that we can do at the Baker's Union to support your disputes, just get in touch. Solidarity. Union uh, and uh, we've got a speaker from United Hospitality uh, sector as well later on organising uh, those and organised sectors uh, in, in, in our communities but vital uh, workers in terms of putting the food on our tables and, and when we're out and about. Uh, our next speaker is Jason Richards. I think uh, one of the longest lasting disputes we've had uh, so far uh, in terms of uh, some of the very bitter disputes in terms of the, the way that the employer of Royal Mail has actually been um, uh, harassing and trying to destroy our postal service. Obviously we want the renationalisation of Royal Mail, that is a key demand that the trade union movement is putting forward, but we also want to make sure that the CWU members in Royal Mail actually uh, achieve uh, what's needed in terms of taking on this horrendous boss. Obviously there's an offer on the table at the moment, uh, but quite frankly we need to make sure we're ready to stand firm with all the postal workers uh, and uh, make sure that we keep uh, this uh, important service uh, across uh, our, our, our movement. And I think certainly during the pandemic we all realised how important this service was in terms of making sure that everybody was alright with that universal uh, service it was absolutely vital in terms of getting uh, things uh, to, to everybody across the whole of our communities. So Jason, over to you.
Good afternoon, comrades, brothers and sisters. I'm Jason Richards, Secretary of the CWU, South East Wales and Mile Branch, and also the Secretary of the Rhonda and Tap Trades Council. The past nine months has been an incredibly challenging time for our members. As the cost of living crisis has impacted on all of us, Royal Mail waged a disgraceful union busting campaign against us, attacking the membership and CW reps across the country with the goal of removing us from the workplace. We have had to deal with numerous dismissals and suspensions across the branch on trumped up charges. They are provoked and bullied in the workplace or on their social media platform. Withheld sick pay, denied members overtime, paid agency companies millions of pounds to undermine our industrial action, and they have forced through changes leading to unmanageable workloads. However, despite their attempts, our members have stood strong and shown determination in the face of a hostile employer. We have had three record-breaking national ballots leading to 18 days of industrial action. I want to acknowledge the support and solidarity we have received from the public, trade unions, trades councils, members of Senate, and the small number of MPs who have came out to support us on the picket lines. Your solidarity has uplifted our members and helped us keep us going throughout this dispute. As many of you are aware, the CWU and Royal Mail have now reached a negotiated agreement and our branch will meet next week to decide whether to recommend or to, to the members to accept the deal or to reject it. Uh, but ultimately, it is the membership that will decide whether they accept paying the price for the gross mismanagement of Royal Mail. Mm. However, let me be clear, whether this agreement is accepted or not, this fight is far from over. We cannot ever forgive or forget the actions of Royal Mail during this dispute. The mismanagement of Royal Mail is another example of a failed attempt at privatisation. The industry has been running to the ground while shareholders have stuffed their pockets until there is nothing left. £567 million since 2022. And I personally believe that now is the time for a campaign to bring Royal Mail back into public ownership. The May Day Rally is a time to remember the struggles and achievements of the workers' movement throughout our history. We must continue that legacy by standing together, shoulder to shoulder, fighting for the rights of all workers in all industries. Together, we can and we must bring about a fairer and more equal society for working people. And let's start that journey by getting rid of this disgraceful Tory government. Solidarity! Yeah. Sorry, can you hear me all right now? Is that better? 
I normally speak too much anyway, as I mean. <laughs> I had the enab an enable task, or uh, uh, Jason had the enable task of following up the Mick Lynch at the rally in uh, January of this year, and I've got the enable task of following up to Jason, so he was a great speech before. But I bring you fraternal greetings from the RMT and a, a sincere thanks for the support that's been afforded to us in the dispute, which is, as you know, 12 months running. Now, unfortunately, I was hoping I could come here today and say we've made some progress in the dispute and that we would we, 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 uh, have some uh, group blueprint to move forward to reach a dispute resolution. Unfortunately, uh, we have suffered from the interference of both the Rail Delivery Group and the Conservative Administration. Only as uh, recently as this week, what they've done is they've reneged on a commitment. So we, were, we have now placed on further action for the 13th of May and, and also our, our sister union, ASLEP, will be taking action around about the same period of time. We face disgraceful attacks on our terms, conditions of employment and the very uh, job security of our members going forward. These are some workers that are in the third year of a pay freeze. They have suffered uh, almost 20% in real terms uh, cuts in their cost of living and it's a fight we remain determined to win and we will be, we'll be taking that action in the on the 13th and we will also be delivering a strong rebalance which will declare on the fourth week. So we very much remain in the fight and if we if we've empowered working people to fight and struggle, well that's fantastic for us. We remain determined yeah, yeah. to achieve a fair and square deal for our members. And, I'm, and I thank you sincerely for the support that we've forward to today in that respect. But when you talk about support, the support has been fantastic from both the trade union movement, the trade councils, um, in certain sections of, of the uh, political uh, of the Labour Party, uh, uh, but and, and also the general public. Uh, but what has been the Conservative government's response to this? Instead of heeding the call for a fair solution and a fair deal for workers, which everyone's crying out for, what have they seemed to do? They've seeked to introduce minimum service levels to restrict the ability of trade unions to take industrial action. It's an absolute fundamental attack on our on human rights and an attack on democracy. And what we need to do is we need to take every single step we can to fight that and defeat that. Um, and also as well, uh, I, I do, I'm encouraged by the call, that the, the, well, the, the statement that the Labour Party will rescind that resolution, uh, that, uh, that um, uh, policy if they come into power. But it should be remembered as well that the Labour Party, in 13 years of, of government, refused to repeal one single element of the anti-trade union legislation. So it's not good enough to just repeal that, they need to repeal the whole lot. And that's what we need to be pressing for, from going forward for the um, and pushing for that. We also need to make sure that all our utilities, all our state industries have returned to public ownership. But the reality is this, is the profiteering has ruined this country. It needs to stop. And what the, and these kind of movements and these kind of events are the first step in fighting and claiming a favour of society for all. So thank you for the invitation to attend. Solidarity to all and victory to working people. Thank you. speakers now there's just one last speaker uh, uh, before we assemble and obviously we're going to march down uh, to the government buildings uh, and uh, be seen uh, by the uh, population in Cardiff all the shoppers in the city centre this is May Day and we want to make sure that uh, uh, everybody uh, in, in, our, in our city can see the trade union movement on the march and obviously we have got a band that are going to be assembling as well uh, leading uh, our, our demonstration so our, our next speaker is uh, Dave Bartlett, Secretary of the Cardiff Trades Council, uh, but also the Vice Chair of the PCS Wales Committee as well. Go on, Dave. First of all, can I apologise on behalf of Cape Cardiff Trades Council that the proper speaker system, which should have been here, isn't working. Got one that is working at the end for the second half of the rally, but not for you. But never mind, because if we're going to achieve socialism, we're going to need more than just the barriers of a speaker system not working. Uh -huh, yeah, go on. Think of our brothers in the, tw in the 19th century, they didn't even have what we've got now. Comrades, welcome to the march and rally, to the great tradition of the May Day march and rally. It's now uh, 12 months since the trade union movement decided to flex its muscles and show to this corrupt Tory government that we are not going to stand idly by while I tear up our terms and conditions and try and cut us off from pay. What began 
as the summer of discontent became the winter of steel. Just this week, four and a half million people are still taking industrial action. That's the RCN. And can we give a huge round of support, please, to the nurses from the RCN? who have defied their union recommendation and in England are still determined to stay out and have rejected the pay offer. They are joined by our brothers in my union this week in the PCS and also of course by the NEU in England. Now it is true some have settled at the present time, some a bit more favourable than others, that's the way things sometimes go. But the message we got is very, very simple. What's happening with the trade union movement is building for the future. Because while inflation is at 12%, food inflation, by the way, is 19%. For some people, you have a choice. Do you heat the cooker or do you put on the radiator? It's very, very simple. As long as inflation is like that, then what we're being offered at the present time just isn't good enough and in fact we will continue to struggle and these present struggles are not the end of it it's the beginning because in the last year the TUC has reported that no more that uh, 5,000 new or sorry, that's just in one union I believe the NEU 5,000 new reps have been added to the uh, to the fighting union every union is going to be stronger next year than they are this year because those battles those battles are not gone away and this fight really is all about because this government quite frankly can't run a bath let alone run the economy <laughs> for two decades we've had disastrous pay freezes then we had the pandemic and then my god do you remember you remember the Mad Hatter's Tea Party? Trust? Remember it? <laughs> now it's Sunak. But they're all the same. They're all telling us it's no pay rises, no jam, not for the next year, not the next two years, the next ten years is what they're telling the Labour and Trade Union movement. We're not actually going to be uh, having it. And at this stage as well, I just want to pay huge tribute. First of all, to all the workers, all the unions that come out in strike uh, this year and will continue to do so. Can I make a special tribute, please, to the postal workers who I think have endured the most vicious management that you could think possible. What they have gone through is an absolute disgrace to the so-called 21st century. And as Jason said, you know, they're in a difficult position. There are some concessions, but they've still got 400, 400 members suspended or on strike. And we say that's an absolute scandal that should be happened. And let's give a round of applause to the huge premier of the, of the post -war. And the second tribute I think we have to make at this meeting is to the, uh, those nurses who have bravely defied their union recommendations and are staying out in England at the present time. And those nurses understand this isn't just about pay, this is about the future of the NHS. Our NHS is on life support. Life support. It's estimated now 300 to 400 people are dying every week. Not because of winter, not because of the, the issue of older people and whatever, but because the emergency care cannot cope. That is another new norm they think we are going to endure. Add to the norm of the 8 a.m. phone uh, nonsense. The, uh, the fact that a and look like campsites. The fact you have to wait hours for, a hospital to, for an ambulance to turn up. Britain has got the lowest number of beds of anywhere in Western Europe. And yet, all those beds can't be utilised because of the breakdown in emergency services and the thousands of nurses that are leaving. 
We should be saying, as a trade union movement, get rid of the privateers in the National Health Service. Bring them back into public ownership. Let's have a democratic control of the NHS and let's make it service with huge investment for the future because we are proud of the NHS and we are not going to allow the Tories to destroy it. Just to finish him, comrades, I want to say this, is that now it's, as I said, we're now entering another winter and summer first, of course. Spring. <laughs> well, that. Spring. <laughs> the next thing on our, on our issue, I think we have to be aware of what the Tories are trying to do with the anti new anti trade union laws. And if they push these through, we as a trade union have to be organised. We have to demand now that the TUC, if they push these through, begin preparations for mass demonstrations and a general strike, uh, a 24 hour general strike, at least to start with. Because I'll tell you this the hypocrisy in these new emergency service laws are ridiculous. It means fire workers, health workers, it means um, uh, bus drivers, train drivers. They could be forced under this provision to scab against their own members. That's what this Tory government is trying to do. And the hypocrisy of it all is absolutely outstanding. Do you remember the P&O strike a few, uh, about a year ago? That was, they, they, the employer broke the law. There was no consultation with those workers. They removed them by force from the boats and they got away with it scot-free. That cannot happen this time in terms of what we're trying to do. It's like the, uh, the, t the thresholds they introduced. By the way, what's shown by the trade union being alive and kicking, all, many of these trade unions absolutely massacred the 50% threshold. Some had 90% turnouts, 90% in favour of industrial action. But if they applied those principles, 50% threshold to politics, you wouldn't have many MPs elected. 30% of MPs wouldn't pass the 50% threshold. 70% of councillors wouldn't pass the threshold. And in the, ca in the case of police commissioners, well, none of them. Not one bugger will be actually past the threshold. The person who was elected, can't remember their name, from Gwent, was elected, wait for this, on a turnout of 3%. Oh and they tell us that 50% is the minimum in terms of the trade union movement. That sticking hypocrisy is not going to be there. It's not a barrier we're going to put up with in the next moment of time. To finish, comrades, we've got a long way to go. We need to be bold what we want to do. We want to begin to build a movement. A movement that's going to actually in favour of working class people. And we want a movement that's going to defend it. And I'm not sure Starmer's going to do that. We want a movement that's going to defend it with the same vigour the Tories defend their own class. Comrades, this is the May Day rally. It's always been a signal of what we've achieved in the past. Now it must become a signpost what we want to do as a trade union movement in the future to build a trade union movement to transform society in a way that represents us and then and a society that's going to represent the millions not the millionaires thanks very much thanks uh, dave and obviously we're going to start assembling uh, i think the band is going to be at the front so uh, they're going to uh, but if we can start assembling but i think certainly dave's going to start coordinating that but i think certainly some figures for everybody to think about uh, while we're uh, sorting ourselves out. 89% increase in profits of a fat cat's happened uh, it, uh, last year since 2019. 89% their profits have gone up while our income has gone down dramatically. That's why we're fighting for a decent pay rise, for also the resources that we need. So the money is there in society. It's just been sat on by the 1% or the 0.1%. So there is a battle that we need to be having. Uh, and uh, you know, some of the biggest uh, fat cats that are actually raking the money in are the energy companies, are the supermarkets, uh, and the fuel companies, uh, and so on. The, uh, the companies that we need to see uh, renationalized. Some of the companies uh, 
that's a, a run uh, and should be in the public sector, which we've heard up from earlier, where they're running Royal Mail, BT, and then the railways, like, <laughs> like not like a service that we all need, but actually uh, in terms of uh, uh, profit only. Uh, services that we need, so we need to fight for those companies to be renationalised, but also the energy companies. And actually, if you think about the billions of pounds worth of the, the big four energy companies have made, imagine if those that money was invested in green technology in a future so we could actually have free energy that is actually provided in a good, clean way. There's a whole range of things we could do if we actually uh, owned the economy. There is a good reason why our banner has Unite for Socialism on it. Those are the demands that are really coming to the fore now. And uh, as we all gather together, uh, marching through the city centre. Let's make it a lively demonstration. Let's make it loud and proud in terms of our movement is on the rise, is on the march. And where we've had enough. But the more we stick together, the more we stand together, the more we can achieve. So, how's it looking? So, I'll let everybody start gathering now.